Hello everyone, my name is James Wilson. I'm a graduate student here in the Electrical Engineering Department, and today I will show you a quick example of how to find the state space equations from a simple circuit. So, more specifically, I want to write these equations. x dot is equal to ax plus bu, where x is our state vector, x dot is a derivative of those state vectors, a is is a matrix and B is another matrix paired to the input U. I also wish to write Y is equal to CX plus DU, which in a similar format, Y is the output, C is a matrix corresponding to X, and D is a matrix corresponding to U. And I'll show you how I will get these equations. So the first thing we want to do is when we look at our circuit, we want to determine what the states are. Now what are states? States are anything that have a uh, derivative component, a component that changes with respect to time. In particular, we have components like the capacitors that hold charge and inductors that hold current. So in the circuit, our states are anything with components that change with respect to time, that needs time to reach a steady state value. In particular, we have capacitors that hold voltage and inductors that hold current. And the equations for these devices, as we recall from our basic circuits classes, is the uh, current through the capacitor is the capacitance times the derivative of the voltage of the capacitor with respect to time. For the inductor, it's simply the inductance times the derivative of the current of the inductor with respect to time is equal to voltage. And for our resistors, for convenience, I simply wrote the Ohm's law, V is equal to IR. So knowing that, right, our states for the capacitor are the voltage because the capacitors are storage devices for voltage. So I'll define my first state here, right, as X1. For capacitor 1, for capacitor 2, I'll define my state here as X2. And then for the inductor, because the inductor is current, this whole branch, the current through this whole branch here, is actually x3, right? Now I've defined my states on the circuit. The next thing I will do is define the derivative of these states. As we can see for equation for capacitance, the derivative is the uh, current through this branch, right? So. If I define the current to be this way, because this is going against the plus, we have C1x1 dot. So you can immediately see that x1 dot is dv dt. Similarly, for the second capacitor, the current will be going in this direction, which is C2x2 dot. Finally, for the inductor, right, the derivative of the inductance of the current going through the inductor is the voltage. So our x3 dot is actually the voltage across the inductor, which is Lx3 dot. OK, very good. So we've defined our states, the derivative of the states. Observe that we have two time-varying inputs. One is a current source, u2, and the other is u1, a voltage source. With this knowledge and using some simple um, theorems, from circuits one, specifically KCL and KVL, we can determine how to, we can figure out how to find um, the solutions to this equation. Okay. So first, the simplest thing I want to solve for is writing an equation for x1 dot in terms of x or the input u, right? If we look at this node here, we can simply write KCL directly. We have C1 dot, C1, X1 dot, plus U2 is equal to C2, X2 dot. But observe that in this current, in this branch here, C2, X2 dot is equal to X3, because the current is the same everywhere in the same branch. So we can immediately get two of our state equations from this one simple formula. First, if we isolate it, if I break this down, we have C1, X1 dot is equal to X3 minus U2. Further simplifying this, we have X1 dot 
is equal to 1 over c1 x3 minus 1 over c1 u2. This will go into our matrix. Secondly, we can immediately write x2 dot is equal to 1 over c2 x3. So, from this, from, for our x dot equation, we only need to find x3 dot now. How can we do that in this big circuit? Well, using KVL, right, specifically on the largest branch here, we observe that x3 dot can be written in terms of x2, x1, and u, right? In other words, there are no derivative terms when we do KVL except for x3 dot across the outer loop. So I'll go ahead and write that now. u1t is equal to the voltage across R1, so I'll write that here, plus x1, right, plus x2, plus L x3 dot, plus the voltage across R2, which I will define as such. Now, if we look, we know using Ohm's law that V is equal to IR. We actually know the current through this branch. It's C1, X1 dot, right? V, R1 is equal to C1, X1 dot times R1. More specifically, we know from this equation here that x1 dot is equal to this function. So we can then write uh, that vr1 is equal to uh, shit. r1 times c1 times 1 over c1 x3 minus 1 over c1 u2, right? We can also, simp uh, expanding this through, this is simply equal to r1 x3 minus r1 u2, right? Then if we do a similar thing for vr2, right? vr2 is equal to x3 times r2, right? So if we take this, and we do these substitutions, we get u1 is equal to x1 plus x2 plus r1 plus r2 x3 minus r1 u2 plus l1 x3 dot. Right? So now, all we need to do is solve for x3 dot, which, skipping some algebraic steps, we get x3 dot is equal to minus x1 over L1 minus x2 over L2, L1, sorry, minus R1 plus R2 over L1 times X3 plus U1 over L1 plus R1 over L1 U2. Okay, so we actually can now write 
the first, the top term. But before I write that out, I just simply want to write the equation for y. As we can see from here, y is the voltage across the inductor plus the voltage across the resistor R2. Writing it directly, y is equal to L1 x3 dot plus VR2. Making some direct substitutions, this is equal to minus x1 minus x2 minus R1 x3 plus U1 plus R1 U2. So we have our state equations. Now we are ready to write everything in this form here. So I'll start with x dot. We know that x dot is equal to x1 dot, x2 dot, and x3 dot. This is equal to our A matrix times our state matrix, or state vector, 1, x1, x2, and x3, plus B multiplied with our input vector, u1 and u2. Right? So again, this is u, this is d, b, this is x, this is a, and this is x dot. So how do we fill in these, a, this A matrix and this B matrix? First, note that each of these rows corresponds to the state that's right next to you. So the first row of our A matrix corresponds to x1, specifically the coefficients of the state variables. x1 dot is here, as we can see. The coefficients for x1 dot are 1 over c1 with x3 and 1 over c1 minus 1 over c1 with u2. So in other words, we know it says this is independent of x1, so we write a 0, and independent of x2. But we write 1 over c1 because that is a coefficient with x3. Similarly, for our input, it is independent of u1, but it depends on u2 with the coefficient of minus 1 over c1. And we follow this procedure for the rest of the derivatives of the states. So x2 dot depends only on x3. So we can immediately write 0 for the x1 and x2 places, and 1 over c2 on the right side corresponding to x3, and two zeros over here because there are no inputs in this equation. Finally, we have a big x3 dot, which looks like it has a little of everything in it. So x1 x3 dot depends on x1 with coefficient 1 over L1. Next to x2 is minus 1 over L1. Next to x3 is R1 plus R2 over L1. Finally, for our inputs, we have 1 over L1 and R1 over L1. So the last thing we need to do is write our output equation. right? So y is a scalar value in this case because we only have y is equal to so this is our c vector which is multiplied by x1, x2, x3 and is added with the d vector and the input u1, u2. Right? So again, this is u, this is d, this is x, and this is c. And of course, this is y. So once again, we follow the same procedure as we saw last time. We have minus 1 with x1. We have minus 2 
um, excuse me, minus 1 again with x2, and we have minus r1 with x3. And for our inputs, we have a positive 1 for u and a positive r1 for u2. So here we are. We have written our state space equations. Now, once we have these state space equations, we can actually easily write the transfer function, if you're using a computer, that is, by this. The transfer function is equal to C times S, that's uh, S in the Laplace domain, times I, the identity matrix, minus A inverse times matrix B plus D. Now, this can be quite troublesome to compute, but otherwise requires on linear algebra uh, and matrix multiplication. On another presentation, I can show you how to find the transfer function of this in the Laplace domain using impedances on this, which is actually much simpler if you're doing it by hand. And you can find the link right here. Thank you. High five. <laughs>